And now, Sir John Mills. Well, I believe that since my life began, the most I've had is just a talent to amuse. The words, ma'am, of your great friend and mine. The man who gave me my first chance in the West End in cavalcade at Drury Lane Theatre. Sir Noel Coward. He, too, would have been 90 this year. And I know, ma'am, he would have wanted to be the first to salute you. Noel Coward's career was, in essence, the very history of the British theatre in his time. And uh, more successfully than most, he managed to capture the spirit of the changing years of our lifetime. Here now, from Sheridan Morley's recent West End stage musical, Noel and Gertie, are the delicious Patricia Hodge and the delightful Simon Cadell with the memory of private lives and how in 1930 it came to be written. <laughs> Private Lives was conceived in Tokyo, written in Shanghai, and first produced in London, where it opened the new Phoenix Theatre on Charing Cross Road on September the 24th, 1930. It was described in the papers variously as being thin, tenuous, brittle, gossamer, iridescent, and delightfully daring, all of which connotated to the public mind cocktails, evening dress, repartee, and irreverent allusions to copulation, thereby causing a gratifying number of respectable people to queue up at the box office. <laughs> there is actually more to the play than this, however, but on the whole, not very much. Fortunately for me, I had the inestimable advantage of playing it with Gertrude Lawrence. And so, three quarters of the battle was won before the curtain went up. I must go and find Sybil. I must go and find Victor. Well, why don't you? I don't want to. It's shameful. Shameful of you. Don't. I feel terrible. <sighs> you must leave me for a minute. Don't leave me or I shall go mad if you do. We won't talk about ourselves anymore. We'll talk about outside things. Anything you like. Only just don't leave me till I've pulled myself together. Very well. What have you been doing lately, during these last years? Oh, uh, travelling about. I, I went round the world, you know, after we... Yes, 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 I know. How was it? The world? Yes. <laughs> oh, highly enjoyable. China must be very interesting. Very big, China. And Japan? Very small. Did you eat shark's fins and take your shoes off and use chopsticks and everything? Practically everything. And India, the burning gars or gats or whatever they are. And the Taj Mahal. How was the Taj Mahal? Unbelievable. A sort of dream. That would be the moonlight, I expect. You must have seen it in the moonlight. Yes. Moonlight can be cruelly deceptive. And it didn't look like a biscuit box, did it? I've always felt that it might. <laughs> Darling. Darling, I do love you so. And I do hope you met a sacred elephant. They're lint white, I believe, and very, very sweet. I've never loved anyone else for an instant. No, no, you mustn't, Elliot. Stop. And you love me, too, don't you? There isn't any doubt about it, is there, anywhere? No. No doubt anywhere. You're looking very lovely, you know, in this damn moonlight, Amanda. Your skin is cool and clear, and your eyes are shining, and you're growing lovelier and lovelier every second as I look at you. You don't hold any mystery for me, darling. Do you mind? There isn't a particle of you that I don't know, remember, and want. I'm glad, my sweet. More than any desire anywhere, deep down in my deepest heart, 
I want you back again. Please. Don't. Don't say any more. You're making me cry so dreadfully. I leave you never. on. Tastes change. There is no business like show business. But there are other businesses that are slightly less demanding and exhausting. The world for some years has been sodden with tears on behalf of the acting profession. Each star playing a part seems to expect the purple heart. It's unorthodox to be born in a box, but it needn't become an obsession. Let's hope we have no worse to plague us than two shows a night at Las Vegas. When I think of physicians and mathematicians who don't earn a quarter the dough. Well, I look at the faces of people in maces. There There's one, one thing I'm burning, burning to, to know. know. Why must the show go on? It can't be all that indispensable. To me, it really isn't sensible on the whole to play a leading role by fighting those tears you can't control. Why kick up your legs when dreading the dregs of sorrow's bitter cup? Because you have read some idiot has said the curtain must go up. I'd like to know why a star takes bows. Having just returned from Benny, a spouse. Brave pooper doopers, go home and dry your tears. Gallant old troopers, you bored us all for years. And if you so went through, I thoroughly will be gone. Why must the show go on? We're asked to condole with each tremulous soul who steps out to be loudly applauded. Stars on opening night sob when they see their names in light. Though people who act, as a matter of fact, are financially amply rewarded. It seems when pursuing their calling, their suffering simply appalling. But, but butchers and bakers and candlestick makers, makers get little, little applause, applause for their, their pains. pains. And when I think of my... And waiters in diners, one, one query forever remains. Why must the show go on? The rule is surely not immutable. It might be wiser and more suitable just to close with it if you are in the throes of personal grief and private wounds. Why stifle the song when doing your job? And if you use your head, you go out and grab a comfortable cab and go right home to bed because you're not giving us much fun. It's not a lot of change we know about. Hats off to show folk for smiling when they're blue. But more popular folk are sick of smiling through. When in your house go, too old, and most of your teeth are gone. Why must the show go on? I sometimes wonder. Why must the show go on? Why must the show go on? Why not? And that's the closing night bit. The public seem to hate the sight of it, dear, and so. Why you should undergo this terrible strain, we'll never know. We know that you're sad, we know that you've had a lot of storm and strife. But is it quite fair to ask us to share your dreary private life? We know you're trapped in a gilded cage. But for heaven's sake, relax and be your age. Stop being gallant and don't be such a bore. Pack up your talents. There's always plenty more. And if you lose hope, take dope and lock yourself in the job. Why must the show go on? Oh, Mammy, why must the show go on? I'm merely asking, why must the show go on? Patricia Hodge and Simon Cadell bringing us two different sides of the work of the master, Sir Noel Cowley, in that excerpt from Noel and Getty. 